Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing really well, relaxing. It's a three-day weekend here in the States. We have Labor Day, so everyone's chilling, relaxing. Labor Day means no labor, no working. So that's pretty cool. We're all relaxing. I don't have any of my camera equipment this weekend, so I decided to do a quick screencast video on a pretty interesting topic, reference counting. If you guys have heard about this, it's like a pretty cool programming slash software technique. This video is going to be a little bit technical. If you're interested in learning about what this means, I have some stuff written out and we're going to go over this. If you don't give an F what this means, go go relax and enjoy your Labor Day. But, you know, reference counting, pretty cool technique. Whole purpose of this screencast is to go over it and hope you enjoy it. All right. So let's just start. What is reference counting? Pretty much this is a technique to help programs manage their memory, manage their memory. So what does that mean? You guys can just imagine a program like Chrome, right? For some programs, maybe the memory is very static. You know I have 10 megabytes, I allocate 10 megabytes, I know I need 10 megabytes and that's fine, right? But for most cases, when it's user driven, the memory is very dynamic. So I'm on Chrome. I just open up, look at I'll look at all these tabs I'm opening up, right? Just by doing that, I'm requiring this program to allocate more memory for me. So it's very dynamic, right? The programmer doesn't know how many times I'm gonna click new tab. So that's what I'm talking about. Memory management is very tricky sometimes because it's very dynamic. And one way to help manage all that dynamic behavior really well is to do these memory management techniques. And one of those techniques is reference counting. So reference counting, it tracks the references, pointers or handles. These are actually kind of synonymous words, but I'm gonna use references more because it's kind of a catch-all, but it tracks the references to any object. And this can potentially make memory management much more automatic. So I have an example written up and I thought about it a little bit to go over what this really means. So if this doesn't quite make sense yet, it will make sense, I hope. But what we're doing is tracking the references to any object. And have a couple links up here just for some reading. Um, if in iOS, Objective-C slash Swift, I know they have this whole framework slash system called automatic reference counting which is a pretty cool read. Um, if you've developed inside this platform before, I'm sure you've learned about this. Uh, inside C++, actually C++ 11 and beyond, there's the concept of shared pointers and weak pointers, and this also does reference counting under the hood. So these two links could be some good reading because what I'm gonna tell you is very kind of a brief overview, and it's not gonna be like the guts of reference counting. So read those when you have time, but Let's just keep going. But first, before we get started, I just want to have a quick link up here to my object-oriented video, which actually I'm going to use as an example. So if you haven't watched this video where I try to explain object-oriented programming, please just go watch that right now as a refresher, all right? And then just come back to it. But assuming you watch that video, one of the key, like most basic concepts in object-oriented programming is this idea of composition. And I gave a real world example of a kitchen, which is pretty easy to understand. Like a kitchen is composed of many different types of things, like a sink, a fridge, a kitchen. But you can just kind of see how this makes intuitive sense, right? If we have a kitchen object, it would be composed of many other objects to make the kitchen itself work. Sink, fridge, chef, other stuff. And this is just a really basic example of composition. And composition is one of those times where we always have references. So that's where these two concepts are kind of tying together, right? Object-oriented concept of composition is a really good example of where there's references. The kitchen has a sink, it has a fridge, it has a chef. This is just another way of saying the kitchen is actually referencing, referencing the sink, the fridge, and the chef. It might have a pointer to it might have a pointer to those objects if we're in C. If we're in like C++, it might have a reference to those objects, but I'm going to use the word reference for the rest of the video, but hopefully it's really, really clear that the concept and idea of composition directly correlates the references, right? 
kitchen composed of sink, fridge, chef. A kitchen has a reference to a sink, fridge, and a chef. All right, so hope that's clear. And let's just keep moving. So if we keep going, what is this reference counting all about? So pretty much what from earlier, if you remember, reference counting is tracking the reference count for any particular object. And let's just take our first example of a kitchen. So each object counts the number of references to itself, kind of like this. So if we have a kitchen here, there's going to be a different reference count for sink, fridge, and chef. They each maintain their own reference count. And what if what does that really mean? So let's just take the sink as an example. The kitchen is referencing the sink. So at some point in time, kitchen actually allocated the sink and is keeping a reference to it. Maybe it's keeping a pointer to the sink. We in increment sink's reference count by one when this happens. So what does this really mean from sink's perspective? Like what is sink thinking? So this blue text is like a sink, okay? It's kind of weird, but. What's up? This is sync here. Right now there is one thing referencing me, the kitchen, and my reference count is one. So hopefully that's also pretty easy to understand. Kitchen is referencing sync, and each individual object is actually tra tracking that count. So the sync tracks that there's only one thing referencing itself at this point in time. So what actually happens when we destroy the kitchen? Okay. We made the kitchen and when, and then made all these objects, but eventually we're going to have to destroy the kitchen. And before we get into any details, I hope it just makes intuitive sense that if the kitchen is destroyed, we're not going to need the sink anymore, right? If the kitchen goes away, the sink, the fridge, the chef, they might as well go away too, right? That's what should happen intuitively, but let's break down how that actually works automatically. Or programmatically okay and that's what reference counting is all about how does this work programmatically so before the kitchen is deleted the reference count kind of looks like this right kitchen has a sink fridge chef and their reference count is just one each of them has a count of one at the moment the moment the kitchen is destroyed that's one less reference for these three objects and their reference count is going to get decremented decremented meaning minus one. So it was one before, if it gets decremented, it's gonna go down to zero. All right, what did I write here? I'm not saying exactly what I wrote, but the kitchen was referencing the sink. So when it goes away, that sink's reference count was one and it goes to zero. And once this special number goes to zero, something very special happens, all right? So this is the sink talking again, right? So sink here, the number of things that are using me has changed. Right now there are zero things referencing me. And once this happens, once sync, once sync kind of acknowledges that there's zero things using sync at the moment, it can actually delete itself. Like nothing's referencing me anymore, so nothing else needs me. And I'm gonna destroy myself and restore some resources. Okay, so hope that example made sense to everyone. Once the kitchen's destroyed, all everything it's composed of, the sink, the fridge, and chef, they're gonna get destroyed because their reference count reaches zero. So I have one more example and hopefully it ties some more things together. So I have another example here just to kind of solidify this idea. Now we have two kitchens. All right, kitchen A, kitchen B. But the tricky thing here, or the only thing that's different here is we're sharing a chef object, Joe the chef, and this is kind of global. So kitchen A, sink A, fridge A, but it has Joe the chef. Kitchen B, sink B, fridge B, but it shares Joe the chef. So hopefully this makes sense. We just double the kitchens and we're sharing Joe. So based on what I just said, this is the reference count and it should make sense to you, all right? Kitchen A, Sink A has a reference count of one, obviously, because only Kitchen A is using Sink A. Joe, the chef, has a reference count of two, okay? And hopefully this makes sense because both kitchens are using Joe or both kitchens are referencing Joe, so his reference count is two right now. Almost everything else, everything besides Joe is exactly the same. So just digest this a little bit, digest this a little bit, and 
this is really important, all right? This reference count of two actually makes this example not trivial. So let's just destroy kitchen B first, all right? We're gonna destroy kitchen B. So this is the reference count of kitchen B after we destroy it, all right? We don't need sink B or fridge B anymore. Obviously, the reference count was one. It's gonna go down to zero because it's decremented and just like our old example, those things are gonna get destroyed. Simple, right? But what about Joe the chef? Joe the chef's reference count was two, but now it's gonna be decremented by one because kitchen B was destroyed. But we can't destroy Joe yet, right? Because kitchen A is still using him. That reference count of one pretty much means something else is using you and we can't kill you yet. So more strange blue text here, but hey, I'm Joe. Now there's one thing instead of two things referencing me, I can't get destroyed yet. So now I think you guys might know where the ex example is going, but if we destroy kitchen A, those reference counts get destroyed, decremented, excuse me, those reference counts get decremented again. And there's, at this point, nothing is referencing Joe the chef anymore. Once kitchen A goes, that one, this one from up here is gonna go to zero. And once all these objects go to zero, they will all be destroyed. All right, so that's one slightly, a little trivial, but still slightly non-trivial of how reference counting works across one shared global object, which was Joe in this case. So hopefully that was pretty cool. Um, gonna wrap up the video here. Small homework, not really homework, just something to think about something for everyone to think about but the question I would pose is what about cyclical references and this usually happens if what happens if kitchen references a sink but the sink also references the kitchen and this is kind of like a one-to-one -one cyclical references but you can imagine how when things get complicated you can unknowingly make these things and these are really tricky things so this kind of um this kind of problem, it's solved by this idea called weak references. This whole video we just talked about, I guess they're strong references, all right? In Objective-C, they're called strong versus weak. C++, it's shared versus weak, but the ideas are very similar. So I would, if you're interested in learning about this even further, read about how to solve cyclical reference counting via weak references. And both these languages have different techniques, or it's actually the same technique, they just call them different things. So just go read about it. All right, guys, so that's the end of the video. Slightly technical video now. Sorry it wasn't thought out too much. I whipped up this document in like 10 minutes, but hopefully I just wanted to make a quick video, put it out there so there's something to watch this week. Hope you guys enjoy it. Please leave me any questions about this topic, reference counting, pretty cool topic. It's been around for a while. It's nothing new, but it's good to understand. All right. So hope everyone has a great week and take care.